Hello folks! In the course of 24 live streams, we developed a game from scratch, going from having absolutely nothing to having a game released on Steam. In these 24 live streams, a total of 81 hours of development, there is a lot of good information for you. So I decided to organize it and list the main topics discussed throughout the development. Kind of a step by step of what we did to develop the entire game. Hopefully, it can help you and point you in the right direction. This is the final result we developed. The game starts off as a simple breakout clone, with special attention to the game's feel, animations, particles and such. Then, we play around with the idea. What if other arcade games had to be like Breakout? So we get Breakout Punk, Breakout Tetris, and Breakout Space Invaders. Being developed entirely on a live stream, you can easily download the source code to learn, modify, copy, and make your own games. I divided the tasks accomplished based on each live stream so you can follow that chronologically. So let's get started! Okay, welcome everyone to my first ever live stream. On episode 1, I started off by planning the structure of the game's code and tested the build by making a Hello World program. So if I try to run, I have the Hello Sealer. Then, we looked through the Win32 documentation to add an entry point for our game. We opened a window, wrote the first version of our render, processed input and timings. Off to episode 2. Hello everyone, welcome to my second live stream. Right off the bat, we started making the gameplay, the breakout clone, and started to organize the code to spawn blocks. They implemented a simple AABB collision for the player and the ball, and implemented the first version of the ball versus block collision, a full sweep that stops the ball at the closest block it collided that frame. Okay, now it makes sense. Then in episode 3, I started to play around with different levels. Now it's pretty cool, I think. It's starting to look like a real game, right? based on what people were suggesting and some ideas of my own. We built the structure to allow us to easily add new levels and change completely the game rules in that level. On episode 4, we finished the structure of the game code and programmed several game mechanics that allow us to make interesting levels. No, uh, we don't. Episode 5 was when the game really started to shine. I added levels that corresponded to the original game design core idea, playing several arcade games as if they were breakout. Having most of the levels this early allowed us to keep iterating and improving them all the way to the final version, and we also implemented a cool random number generator in our game engine. Episode 6 was all about solidifying what we built before, so I created a logging system to help debugging our game and made several improvements, fixing bugs and making it overall more robust. With the core gameplay done, on episode 7, we started to improve the game's feel. We added small animations to the game, ball trails and overall feedback to the player. This is what we wanted! Then, on episode 8, we doubled down on the game feel and created a full particle system, added more animations, more feedbacks, and improved the controls. There was also some bug fixing, and bug creating too, right? Ah, uh, couldn't, couldn't make it in time. With the gameplay on a solid state, we shifted our focus to the engine once again, on episode 9. Engine programming, right? The first thing we did in our engine robustness pass was to support drawing rotated rectangles in our software render. There was some head scratching with all that math, but we put it off in the end. Oh, victory! <laughs> in fact, this is the 10th live stream. On episode 10, we started off by making some temporary program art and displayed pixel independent bitmaps in our software render. Huh? Then, I did some better looking pixel art and make the player move with sub pixel accuracy, making it look and feel super smooth. Oh, I really like that. We also added a print float system, a unique random seed for each run and an awesome force field effect, as well as some other improvements. Perfect. That is just perfect. Strong blocks. Ugh, crap, got strong blocks. Episode 11 was all about audio. We implemented the game engine sound system from the ground up. We started by implementing direct sound and playing a square wave. Now I'm gonna try listening to this guy here, and uh, let's hope I don't die. It's still pretty bad. And then reading WAV files, playing them, mixing them, added cool features like panning sound and pitch shifting. So yeah, that was really cool. Then on episode 12, we fixed some audio bugs and programmed the job system to make multi-threaded possible and easy to use in our game engine. With that in place, we started to making some things run asynchronously. 
because we are running asynchronously, asynchronous, in an asynchronous way. <laughs> On episode 13, we did some things to make the game more complete, implemented a main menu, a save system, started implementing the sound effects, and fixing more bugs. It was a great stream. Sound effects do make a lot of difference. Yeah. The focus was all on gameplay on episode 14. We added a ton of sounds, tweaked the feel, and made the necessary improvements to our existing systems, like the audio mixer, to be able to create what we want. Then on episode 15, we did some major visual and experience improvements on the game. The main menu now feels a lot nicer and has better visuals. Not entirely bad, but bad. The game now shows the player a HUD with useful power-up and power-down related information and added support to draw text. I think we got a nice progress today, look at that. Episode 16 was crazy town. We started off by solving some bugs, then we decided to dive headfirst into optimization. First, I programmed a profiler to let us know, compare, understand where the game is running slowly. Then we discussed some optimization possibilities and optimized the render. We got from running the menu at 4K resolution at 66 milliseconds per frame, which is 15 frames per second, all the way to 16 milliseconds per frame, 60 FPS. And there was still a lot of room for improvement. Okay. Okay. We managed, we managed to get that back, to get that back, no, to get like working at all at 16 frames per second. So this is the story of today. This is like the thumbnail, this is like the victory that we achieved. So we started out and uh, yeah, we started out with a menu at 66 milliseconds per frame and finished at 12.4 milliseconds per frame. On episode 17, we went back to the game itself. Solidifying the player's movement and animation, especially in regards to its frame rate independence. We also made the game sleep after flipping the frame to keep a constant frame rate. We also improved the sound, animations, and gameplay overall. Nice. Episode 18 was all about the last level, Tetris. We designed it, improved the existing systems to support what we wanted to do, and programmed and iterated on that level. We went from having nothing to pretty much done in this live stream. On episode 19, we redid the entire collision system, making it more robust to ship the game with. We also created a camera system and implemented screen shake. It really improved the gameplay. By episode 20, it was time to wrap up the gameplay. We did several improvements and fine tuning yeah. to the game's levels and implemented level transitions. They really make the game shine. On episode 21, we created an asset system for our game. We stacked the file, created the cooker to package the assets, implemented an OGG reader, utilized the multi-threading job system to make the OGG decompression run in parallel, and other cool stuff. It was an awesome stream. Look at those points. Oh my god, I missed it. We have the bigger, the biggest piece of news we had in a while, which is the game uh, has now a Steam page. Episode 22 was focused on polishing the gameplay, changing things like the speed and small bugs. Someone suggesting adding a possibility for the player to change the mouse sensitivity Sensiti sensitivity equals... So we wrote a parser to read a config text file from scratch. There, the player can change some options, like mouse sensitivity and window mode. In the very end of the stream, we started a big audio refactoring to make it robust to ship with. Yeah, the sound is crashing, we have to take a look at that. On episode 23, we finished the game. We did some assembly debugging and a nice restructure of the audio mixer to make it thread safe. We also did some final gameplay tweaks, improvements, and polish, like adding more particles. There are never enough particles, right? And that was it. The game was done. We're gonna have a lost stream, so you can keep an eye on that. That'll be pretty cool. And on the very last stream, episode 24, we released the game on Steam. <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two. Okay. I think nothing happened. Could you hear the sound? I pressed the button. I think I'm gonna have to press again. 
Oh my god, the button is not working. Is this... Okay, okay, so... <laughs> when I press the button... It, th things appear down here, so I... It was a chill stream where we talked a lot, I told some stories, gave away some keys to my other game, and celebrated the end of the series. By eating cake in the end. <laughs> I also planned for what's next. How to improve the game, update it, and new projects. This step is often overlooked. I didn't do it before my previous game, which took three and a half years to make. And the bigger the development, the earlier and more carefully you should make the plan, especially post-launch plan. And that was it. So that's the summary of this series. Right now, you can download the game in the source code on Steam. It's also on GitHub. The source code for each individual episode is on each IO. The next step you can take now is jump right in and start watching the development. Or you can watch the source code walkthrough, which is a macro view of what we managed to build and release. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know if you have any questions. So, let's make games!